Hey, I'm Daniel, and on this episode of The Film Crazy Show, my guest was actor Jonah Blackman, as he joined me to talk about two of his roles, one being the role of animal psychic Milton on the short-form TV series Pet Peeves, which is currently available on Reverie.tv, as well as one of his best-known roles, Nico, in another gay movie, a super raunchy parody film in the vein of American Pie. The film recently celebrated its 15th anniversary late last month with the special director's cut. Links to both projects will be in the description below. And here is Jonah Blackman to introduce the podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm Jonah Blackman. Uh, I play Milton Michaels in Pet Peeves and Nico Hunter in another gay movie. And you're watching The Film Craziest Show. Awesome. It's great to have you here, George. I'll try that again. It's great to have you here, Jonah. How's it going? It's great to be had. Daniel, oh. it's, it's, it's going real well. I got my my first shot. I'm feeling confident and good. All Sorry right. for any of those anti-vaxxers out there. I did get a vaccine shot and um, I'm happy that oh. I'm grateful. Okay, I, my mind was somewhere else. I thought like, oh, we had a first take, but like oh. the shot is way better. Yeah, the shot. The... <laughs> nice. But who yeah. knows that that's not very evergreen as far as a conversation, so. To pass that over to. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so I, I figured I'd st- I have a, a couple for pet peeves. I have way more for another game movie. So I'll just start with pet peeves. Um, so is, is so this is like a three episode web series. I guess is fair to say. Yeah, it, it's um, yeah, it's I guess so. I mean, it's playing on Reverie, which is a TV network. So uh, okay. yeah, pet, pet peeves is a a, a short form series um that has three episodes in it and uh, i play milton michaels a a pet clairvoyant uh newly out of prison um and from the south uh, a bit um and uh yeah that's it's a a, such a fun uh premise really in that you know what are our animals wanting to to tell us what are they you know, what do they have to say about us uh, and and how we either treat them or, you know, what we're projecting onto them. I, I just felt like that it's a really um, uncharted territory. Okay, cool. Like, I, I love the accent though. Like our, um, what was it like getting into the character that kind of like, I guess the similar, similarities would be like Dr. Doolittle or like Ace Ventura, but it's like, like you said, it's very like on his own a bit, I think too. Yeah, I mean, I um, I did I did do like pet psychic and just regular psychic research uh, on you know how these people receive and channel their information. Uh, so I went into that, and really the the accent came along rather late in the game. Um, the the woman who was cast as my sister uh, was from the south, and she was um, <laughs> it, it was. Uh, something that it was like, oh, well, we're family. Um, what are we gonna do here? Uh, but we were uh, in the time sequence that we were in. So I got to throw on another color and, and, and get my South on and, and allow that to be a part of, of Milton's personality and, and, and how he communicates. And, um, and that was really fun to play with, for okay. sure. Okay, Mil- Milton's here now. <laughs> Mil- <laughs> Milton. Milton has come. <laughs> so, so you adopted her accent, and she was she was like, "Okay, Jonah, you're doing my accent. I'm not I'm not doing yours." <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that point, I mean, she couldn't really do it without, and I was like, "Well, okay, let me bring this in," and it it just added so much flavor and color, anyways. And and you know, Milton is a bit of an eccentric, um, so I I was happy to to take on to take that on for sure. Okay. Now, were there any aspects of your, yourself that were taken in, like how like Sparky's a childhood dog? So like, were was that was any of you in the character of Milton? Uh, well, you know, so the creator Spencer Shilley, who um, who created the story, he is he is all things animals. Uh, he is a major advocate, okay. and um, you know, this really kind of sprung from his his story uh, more so than than not. Um, and we had worked together. He had edited a film I was in and, you know, came up to me afterwards and was like, 
I really want to write something for you. Um, I, you know, and initially this was a movie um, and then it switched over into a series. Um, but no, I mean, as far as me in there, you know, maybe my own uh, excitement, but I, you know, Milton is, is, uh, <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's, he's definitely different than me, for sure. Uh, I mean, I do feel like I have some, some pretty good uh, psychic abilities and in, in my own intuition and, and, but, you know, not as clear as he does. Uh, and he's a little bit, you know, he's got a shadier side. He, he, he did some shadier things. Uh, and uh, that's not entirely my, my jam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you, you, you can't talk to tapeworms, I guess. You know, I, I tried. I tried through Milton, but that didn't seem to work either. <laughs> okay. Now, this, this was released on, on uh, National Pet Day, right? On April 11th? Yes. Did yeah. you guys do anything special for that? or? Uh, well, you know, I mean, because everyone's still locked in, there wasn't, you know, any kind of full event that, um, that the network uh, could do outside of, a lot of social media about it, um, but uh, and that's kind of all that I really did outside of watching it and having family watch virtually um, to to enjoy. But now it's available; it's free on on Reverie. I think it's Reverie.tv. Um, people can watch it on demand and, and see the whole whole series, if the first season at least. Okay. Now, what, what went into the, you talked about it might have been a feature, but then, so what went into the decision to make it like a short, uh, what would be the word, short form? A TV? series, yeah. I mean, I think it was more a matter of wanting to, um, A, have it be something that could be shot kind of quicker was the idea. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, and, and also things were starting to kind of go into series mode. People were wanting to test things out. Uh, for, for us, this was uh, a little bit of a kind of a throw it together and let's see what um, we could create. And even if this was gonna just be to share uh, with different networks to possibly reshoot or do longer episodes or what. Um, but, uh, but Reverie liked it and took it as um, uh, in the form that it, that it was. And so, you know, um, we'll see what, uh, and also just because the idea sort of had so much legs to continue to develop, you could have so many different types of guest stars and, um, and, and different storylines in there. Uh, there's just so many different pets and people and their relationships uh, to each other that are fun to play with. So it seemed like it was better in the format of, of a series than, than not. Okay, yeah, and you definitely have like three very different episodes here. Like I wanted to know more from the first one with like the kind of dog napper, and then it goes weird in the second one, and then it goes like really weird in the third one. Yes, weird. Welcome to my my weird world of wonder. <laughs> now, can, uh, can we expect to see anything more from Milton? Uh, I hope so. It, it kind of depends on how well the, it does um, out there and if people respond to it. I know the uh, the creator really wants to get into a second season and um, develop some of the um, storylines that were established. Uh, so, uh, you know, I hope so. I think it's it's really fun to play with, and uh, there's definitely more to tell. Okay. Now, I'm I, sorry, I missed the creator's name, but what was what was it like having him write the character for you? Was that was that interesting? Yeah, Spencer Shilley is the creator, okay. and uh, well, I mean, it's, it's an honor to have someone, you know, appreciate your work and want to uh, write something that they have a vision of for you that really isn't you, but, you know, um, I, that was, uh, that was awesome. I, and, and it was great to work with him in kind of developing a Milton out and adding different um, just quirks and eccentricities to, to him and, and everything from his uh, behavior and how he would respond to, to certain aspects. We were trying to figure out if, you know, we were really gonna have the animals, uh, that, that the audience could hear the animals as well or, or not, or, or how, if, if, if Milton would be actually speaking, um, 
a little bit more directly with the animals as opposed to just kind of silently channeling and, and getting that in a visual that the audience gets to see. Uh, so there was sort of a lot of different scenarios in, in, in trying that out, but Spencer's awesome. He, he's a great collaborator and um, yeah, it was, you know, what an honor to have someone want to create work for you. Okay, brilliant. Now, when you're, when you're going out for like auditions and stuff, like, is there a, a specific type of character that attracts you or like something, like something that you're looking for in a character that you play? Um, well, I, I mean, I like to be able to show as much as I can possibly show, uh, you know, from some level of heart to, uh, to Psyche, but I also like, I, 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 I play a lot of eccentric characters and have gotten to play that in my life. Um, so I feel like I get cast in, you know, those that want to have a character that's a little bit out of bounds, if you will, um, in their uh, persona or in what they've done. I mean, I've played murderers and, um, and, and people, but I mean, I, I've also, most of the work I've done has been playing real people, um, uh, you know, in stories and in, in, in in drama, um, you know, you know, real actual characters. So I, I love to be able to to utilize some kind of discipline. I, I like uh, taking on an accent, um, learning a, a new skill set. Um, all of those things really get me um, get me going into uh, to sharing really that which I can share. Um, and and so character wise. I mean, I like to play, I, I like to kind of dive into all different types of, of, of people, but rich and full and, and being able to be well-rounded in that is obviously the most fulfilling because you get to, you know, you're not just showing sort of one, one note. You get to, to, to show the, the expanse of what humanity is in character. All right, cool. Now, transitioning into uh, another gay movie. It's sorry. It's another gay movie, right? Yes. Okay. I I can't get confused. Not another teen movie. So I'm not always like, okay, not another gay movie. No, I know. And you know what? I always told Todd it should have been called not another gay movie because of the you know, not a get another not another scary movie, right? And not another teen movie. I think was another one. So I don't yeah. know why he chose not to have the not in there. Uh, but yes, it is another gay movie yes okay now you you had carved out, carved out like a working relationship with todd stevens now so what how'd you get the audition for the first not shoot for the first another gay movie <laughs> <laughs> you know what i got a, a a call uh from my manager at the time who was like you know his casting director really wants to meet you for this film um and i met with uh eve battaglia Eve Batali, oh gosh, now my, I met with Eve. <laughs> Sorry, Eve. Uh, and uh, she was like, look, I know this might be really kind of racy, but if you would read the script and, you know, and I had never, again, I'd, I'd really never done a comedy at that point. And so uh, I was curious to branch out, you know, in, in, in that kind of work. But when I read the screenplay, I was like, I would never be a part of something like this. This is way too crude and just, it was just so wild and unabashed. And, um, but it stuck with me how much it bothered me. And I was, I had to look at that because I'm, you know, if as an artist, I'm always looking to grow and to learn. And I, I had to really look at my own judgments around that kind of film you know, a teen sex comedy uh, in such a, 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 a such a outlandishly um, queer world. And this is 15 years ago. So that wasn't, you know, th that this was never seen by anybody. There wasn't really genres within the queer genre, you know, of a comedy, let alone a teen and a sex comedy. And so, but once it kind of hit me that I had judgment around this and, I, and then I really kind of changed my my perspective, and I realized this is brilliant. This is this is on the forefront of of talking about um, sex and and for the queer movement and 
and all that. And I really saw the, um, it became sort of my activist films uh, just because uh, they, they really do shock in the way that they do. Um, so, you know, again, initially I was like, no, but then I realized, oh my God, this is really something I have to uh, step into. And I ended up even executive producing um, them because I was, I really got on board. Oh yeah, okay. So you had like a bigger say in Nico kind of thing? Is that how you would be executive uh, producing? I mean, not necessarily in the character. The character was really there. Okay. Um, and initially I didn't even want to play the Nico character, which was out of the four, uh, you know, for people who haven't seen it, this is very much in the vein of um, uh, Porky's or American Pie where you have you know, four teens that are trying to, to um, just get laid, but this is in a gay world, they're all gay and that gay is not the issue, it's just getting laid. And so, but each of the characters is a different sort of archetype. You have the, the regular guy, the jock, the nerd, and then you know, the goth kind of queen character, which was the <laughs> character that I played. And that was really intimidating um, to step into. Um, I, I, but when working with the director, I really got to uh, find kind of, he kind of calibrated my performance in our rehearsals. And once I found where Nico lied in this like exuberance and, and femininity, it really uh, became this wonderful freedom to, to play into. And it inevitably really grounded my own sense of my own masculinity because I got to sort of blow out my femininity uh, in a way that I never would have necessarily or um, had even you know, wanted to. Uh, so it, it, it really, um, it was, it, 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 Nico is quite a character. Okay, and, and make, making this 15 years ago, it's like such a different world now, like what, like, how did you guys deal with, like, if there are any bad reactions or just how did you kind of get through that, I guess? Well, um, I think, you know, we, we got, it was very polarizing, the film, for people in the queer community and outside of the queer community. People sure. loved it who were straight. People hated it who were gay. Uh, people, you know, and vice versa, obviously. People also loved it that were queer and, and not. So you know, at the time it was something that was just a great shocker for people. And I've had people come up to me uh, throughout the years said, you know, I really learned about, <laughs> about my sexuality from that film. Because <laughs> uh, there's so many things and I it was like, I learned about my sexuality in that film, uh, just about human sexuality, because there's things I didn't know that is uh, investigated in, in the ROM. Um, but it really was shocking, I think, at that time. And I think it still is. I just got to revisit the film um, recently and I felt like, wow, it, it, it's amazing kind of what still stands for sure in this film that, that hasn't been done or communicated about. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of more curious about how uh, current generations uh, will receive it. And if they're, you know, their ability to laugh at themselves because there are so many stereotypes that are in it, you know, you wonder if the awoke generation can, um, will be able to embrace it uh, in the way that other generations have at this stage in the game. Okay, yeah, I, um, I, I watched it for the first time like last night, and like, it, it yeah, it was, it was, it's, it's wild. It's, it's a wild film, like. And you know the emoji with like the cowboy, like okay. the yeah. Like, I just I take notes during the films, and I just like so many times I just put like what cowboy duh like cowboy <laughs> fuck because <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's it's wild. It's it's pretty shocking, but it's it, it you can tell the sense of humor too, right? Yeah. Now, for someone like me who hasn't seen the original and just watched the director's cut, like what's what's the biggest difference? So is there a lot of differences? Uh, I think some, I don't think there's too many differences. I think the, um, the director's cut actually has Mink Stoll who was never in the film. I mean, she was actually in the film originally and Todd had had, had to cut out her sequence. He, he, he said that he, he, he um, at the time, he just didn't really find the way to really work 
her character into the film in the way that seemed to work. And then he he said when he was revisiting, he found the actual correct cut, uh, the, the correct take to really build her character off of that would have worked tonally that he, he for some reason just didn't have um, or c- couldn't find initially. So Mink Stoll, you know, John Waters, um, great iconic um, actress, uh, her presence in the film is, is, is totally uh, new. And then he did kind of, um, I think, uh, add in some other elements to some of the scenes. Um, I, again, I hadn't seen it in, in such a long time. So I, I, I didn't know like how much was actually really added in. Um, but, and I know that I think he did take out some aspects too that were, that were not totally kosher uh, with this time. It sort of didn't last uh, through time. Um, okay, and how, when was the last time you saw it? Uh, I, I, you mean, I just saw it recently, probably about, I want to say like two weeks ago. Okay, and then before that? <laughs> I mean, who knows, like maybe sometime within the last 10 years at least. I mean, I, I think maybe at the 10 year reunion, like maybe five years ago, I, I think I watched it um, okay. with some friends or something. Yeah, it's been some time. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but like, cause there, I know that uh, Todd Stevens had, I was reading a thing that he said he hadn't watched it in 10 years and then he was like, oh, people might enjoy a director's cut of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that was sort of the idea and it's having its 15th anniversary and he felt like he could he could do some some tweaks and add some more. Okay, now looking back on your performance, like is, is do you have a favorite part of your performance or is there someone, something that you like wanted to improve on in the original that you you did differently in the sequel? Uh, oh, that I did differently in the sequel. You mean yeah. like, well, I mean, no, I mean, that, you know, that was a really, I'll be honest with you, you know, making a film like, like another gay movie was such a risk for everyone to, to step into. It was really like this balls to the walls kind of, um, you know, you're either on board or you are not. Okay. Um, and everyone really was, I think that was sort of the, the, the magic around why it did so well in its day. And then we did the sequel. Um, was there, it was really like being a rebel in, in, in filmmaking and telling the story, you know, with this kind of humor, with this kind of story. And so I think, you know, everyone really showed up. And, and for me, I felt like, you know, that was just all cylinders going. So there wasn't anything I would necessarily change at all. I'm looking back, I was like, wow, look at how much we all brought to that table. Um, I, I was really happy with uh, with the performance uh, and the performances. And then obviously the sequel was different because we did lose a big portion of our cast whose agents and managers were really weary about having them do another one. And um, and that that came into into play. So there was a different dynamic there, but it was still the same level of of of. Um, of, of, of risk, I think, of, of kind of, you know, bearing it all to some degree uh, in comedy and, and in heart. You know, there was, I think that's what's great about Todd as a storyteller. He, he can have something that's so ridiculous comedically and then ground it with really believable, heartwarming characters that you feel connected to um, so that you really get to have a real ride. Yeah, like even, even in this film, like there's, it's so raunchy, but there's also like that heart with, um... Jared and Griff, I think, mm-hmm. are the character names. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so they're just, just, just thank you. <laughs> just yeah, just with like them by the pool and, and and just being like, oh, like like thanks for being there for me. I was like, okay, like like see, like like this is like raunchy American Pie stuff, but like he it can it has heart too, right? Yeah. So exactly. just exactly to your point with what you were just saying. Now, <laughs> now you you were the only returning uh, cast member for the. Like out of the core four, you were the only returning one for the sweep cool sequel, right? Right. Okay. So yeah, the was it weird to just get used to that dynamic? Because like, I mean, it was initially. I mean, we we had we always knew uh, our um, our uh, Jonathan, who was uh, you know the athletic stud in the of the four, 
boys um, that he was not going to do the, the uh, any sequel. We kind of knew that um, pretty soon once the film came out. But it was two weeks prior to shooting that the other two uh, dropped out. So it was a bit of a shock, um, and we had to recast really quickly and 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 move into a different dynamic and. Um, Todd was really good about making sure that we got some real rehearsal time. We all spent um, uh, a couple of days I'm trying to remember. Actually, I feel like we were we weren't in Florida for that. Even though we shot in Florida, I feel like the rehearsal. I think the rehearsal was one of the one of the the new um, actors was doing a show. I want to say somewhere in like North Carolina or something. So. We flew, all four of us boys were up there and uh, hung out with him during the day and rehearsed and got our camaraderie together um, so that we could, you know, bring that really to the table when we were shooting the sequel. Um, but yeah, it was a quick, uh, a, bit, a bit of a turnaround and it was hard. It was hard to, to have, you know, um, these guys and the actors that, that, that did, you know, that didn't um, come back, it was hard for them. They really loved the experience. It was a lot of pressure from their teams. And, you know, they're, you know, at that point we're newer actors out there in the world and, and people were afraid of, you know, people thinking that you're queer or because you're playing a queer character or, or what. Um, so, you know, all of those things came into play back in the day. I think it'd be so different now. Um, you know, people would really be out and proud um, in it uh, and for it. So, yeah, that was that was a that was a hard uh, hard moment in the in doing the sequel to to have lost uh, some of our main cast. Okay, and I guess it would be different now as well, just because like if you would have cast like a straight person in any of these roles, there might be like the Twitter backlash and such. I don't know though. Maybe that's off base. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I I think that. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, yes, I think there's, I think it seems like there's kind of backlash any way you go yeah. <laughs> at the stage in the game. Uh, there's so much, um, you know, cancel culture hitting kind of any level of sensitivity. So sure. I, I, I know that people have kind of, I, I think that it's really important for, for queer people to be able to play themselves in, in care, you know, in film and in television and represent in that way and have that opportunity. Um, but I also am not uh, someone who's like, they should only play that. I mean, I'm an actor. I want to be able to play all different types of roles because that's sort of the point. Okay. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's I'm not, um, it's not just about playing, but it's so important to have, you know, real, real people representing those types of roles uh, to also, because politically we, we need more inclusion just in, in our talent pool. Um, and in our storytelling. So I understand really both sides of it. I, um, you know, I, I feel like it's one helps move the needle and, and one also, you know, honors the art of it, no matter what, no matter who the artist is. So can I ask him one for about Swan Song? Yeah, please. So one of Tom Stevens' other films that just played itself by itself, as, as you know. <laughs> but uh, I just, this is one I didn't get to ask the last time we chatted, but um, I was just, I was just curious, like, do you have, because that film is such about, like, just inner beauty and just also feeling beautiful and stuff, right? Um, do you, do you have a worse haircut and do you have a bad haircut? Or, <laughs> wait, that's the same thing. <laughs> you have a, you mean yeah. me, Jonah, or the character that I played, or what do you mean? Oh, just you, Jonah. Like, do you have, like, a, like, a worse haircut that you've had, or do you have a best haircut? Just because oh, I, yeah. I found, yeah. I found that, like, hair was played such a big part in that well yeah he's he's you know he's a, a hairstylist in it and jennifer coolidge is his protege and i'm jennifer's protege in it um uh, yeah and it's funny because i todd as you saw even in the other film i did another good movie like hair and that i had hair all different styles i mean yeah. i like having hair i'm grateful to have hair um and i like playing with it so um yeah i definitely have had some bad long too long shaggy hair in fact i just got my hair cut so this is short on me right now um but sure i've had bad hair <laughs> <laughs> and bad cuts yeah for sure okay 
<laughs> okay. But like any specific times or not really? Uh, specific times? Uh, probably about uh, about uh, five days ago. It was, a, it was pretty bad. <laughs> COVID hair. <laughs> it was a little too, a little too long, a little too. I, okay. I, I, I get flips and they fly out and I actually like that, but you know, it was a little, it was dragging my, it was dragging me down. It was just dragging me down. Okay, I get you. Now, go back to, to, to another gay movie, just with, with the haircuts that you have in the film with all the spiky hair and that, like, did you have a favorite look? Oh, God. Um, yeah, that was so much fun because literally every single scene and my character specifically being sort of the queen bee had like, was decked out with makeup and a, every single scene had to be totally different hair, uh, whether it was dyed, colored or what. Um, so I, I have to say, I think probably when all the boys are making the pact to have sex, uh, to have, uh, you know, anal sex, uh, you know, uh, I would say my hair in that scene was pretty badass. I was like, that was sort of like this army look and I, I, the makeup was really like cool. And uh, yeah, and I think I had like, I mean, I don't know. There's so many different things that were fun to play with, but I think maybe that was, uh, was really the most fantastic hairdo I think I had yeah. in another game movie. Okay, I, I don't know if I can even remember the hair. All I remember is the eyeshadow. Oh yes, yes, exactly. But you know what, actually yeah, yeah. now I'm thinking of, it was really the dance sequence when I'm, I have a date with this big porn star guy that I don't know was really a porn star. And he, he goes into a, 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 he ODs on G I think, or K or something like that. Some drug some and he's dancing and I'm dancing. And I think he's, he's like having a, an epileptic fit. And I'm, uh, I think I'm just trying to be cool and dance like him. And he, then he falls out. But in that one, I have like spikes like yeah. my entire head is all spiked and, I, and that was pretty good. I have to say that was a good hair, hair do. Okay. You, you have a lot of dance moves in this film. Were there any that didn't make the cut? Yeah. I don't think if we, I mean, those are pretty much the areas where I got the ability to do it. Uh, I mean, I grew up as a dancer. Um, that was really my first talent. Okay. Uh, I started when I was three years old and then danced, started dancing with the San Francisco Ballet at six. I got to be trained by Barishnikov when I was like 14 uh, with you yeah. know, three other kids in the country. So, I mean, dancing was always, has always been in me. I still dance jazz and, and all that. So um, Todd was like, oh, let's, you know, let's, let's find that. Um, I think there might've, I don't know, if, eh, I don't, I, I think I kind of got to get some good moves in. Certainly the one with Richard Hatch um, and trying to impress him. That was sort of the, the fun one. But in the sequel, if people actually get a chance to see the sequel, I that's really where my dancing kind of went into full. We do a whole Busby Berkeley uh, water sports uh, musical number about golden showers, okay? And I actually got to direct that sequence and it is amazing. Uh, and I'm like turning and there's mermen that are dancing with me. And it, it's just, it's, it's like an old, you know, Busby Berkeley um, musical number. You should check it out. <laughs> okay, that, that sounds wild. <laughs> no. It really is. It, that, was, that was really fun. Okay, my, my last double one for you. Um, what, what was it like working with Richard Hatch in those scenes? And also, what was it like getting Graham Norton for this? Because that's that's a very different look to him, I think. I don't know oh about God. Yeah, Graham. Graham was so game. He was so wonderful uh, to, to be a part of the film. And he just loved it. And 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 he's just, you know, he's tight balls out. He is, you know, he's, <laughs> he's Rodzilla. He plays Rodzilla in the film and has a huge, huge, you know, monster rod um in it and he, he's just so hysterical and fun it, he was amazing to um to play around in that way um and then for richard hatch i mean he had just back then he was pretty famous because he had won the first survivor and you know sure. he was naked in all of those um and so he was naked for us um and we kind of played on that and 
and that was really fun. He was also just really game. Um, you know, he, he, he was he was really quite quite wonderful to work with and, and easy um, to uh, to to work with, and and we we just had a great time. Um, and this was before kind of everything really went bad for all of his taxes and all that other stuff. So um, it, it was a it was a good time. Everyone was really game. I mean, you know, seeing that kind of a movie and reading that kind of a script and seeing what people are doing is again, it's balls to the wall. So if you are game, you're 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 probably going to be you know staying away from it as far as possible. But if you are, you're going to jump in and. Um, most people really did that. Fair enough. Now, could I could I get you to plug where you can find pet peeves? Could I get you to plug where you can find uh, the fifteenth anniversary release director's cut of game, another game movie? Yeah, you can um, you can see pet peeves uh, on Reverie at Reverie.tv, or if you have, I think uh, there's a free channel on every Samsung smart TV, Samsung Plus, or uh, Roku. All of those things you can get it. Um, and then for another gay movie, the director's cut re-release, and that's through Breaking Glass Pictures. And I think that's gonna be available via uh, special DVDs. And then also online at like, you know, Amazon Prime and Apple iTunes and all those, those, all those platforms. Okay, neat. So Jonah Blackman, who plays Milton in Pet Peeves and Nico in another gay movie. Thank you for chatting with me on the Film Crazy Show. Thank you. Awesome. Go crazy! Go crazy! <laughs> <laughs>